that wicked one. Well, we know from last night he had committed sin of the devil. So when he committed murder, who was he was? He was of Satan. Because Satan was the first murderer. And through his brother, wherefore slew he him? Because his own work were evil and his brother was righteous. More but not my brethren if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that love not his brother by his death. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So you ain't got to even pull the trick. You ain't even got to go stab him. You ain't got to beat him. You ain't got to put a bat or do no violence. Just hate him in your heart makes you a murderer. And you ain't it. That's tight. That's the same thing when he told you don't look upon a woman with lust in your heart if you already committed adultery. That's to make you wait tight so you won't act on it. If I remove the thought out your brain, you won't even act on it. You let that thought resonate in your brain after a while, and what he said, from what comes within the man, don't come out of your body because you're going to act on it. You meet your brother long enough, you might want it. You look at that woman long enough, you might try to have sex with her. So what's going to kill all that? So when you look at it, turn your head. You know what I'm saying? Go make peace with that man. You know what I'm you get that out your heart, that ain't good. He already told you in Zechariah 7 and 8 chapter, don't hate your brother in your heart. These are things that y'all hate. With well, that being said, look at the verse 18. Did he say, don't avenge yourself? Listen what he said. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am Yah. So now let's go back to Mark 12. In the 30th verse, he already said, don't avenge nor bear no grudge. So that's not the law. When Solomon wrote that in the Proverbs. This is how the law when the master tell us this in Matthew and Luke. This is how the law when Paul quoted Solomon. You ain't supposed to avenge nor hold no grudge against the children of your people. You're supposed to love your brother if you love yourself. How you gonna be perfect? How you gonna be saved if you don't do these things? So verse 31 I just said. And it says, and the second is life, namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And like Christians like to play that game, they don't know those two. He says in Matthew that the law and the prophets hang on these. See, you're going to fulfill the whole law by doing this. And we know that the law is perfect. So therefore, you will be perfect. He said, the scribes said unto him, Well, now as I have said, the people, there is one God, and there is no other but me. And to love him with all thy heart, with all thy understanding, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and to love his neighbor. As himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Yahshua saw that he answered the few, he said unto them, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that dare ask him any questions. How are you going to answer that after that? Time? He done told you what to do. You can't play with it. You can't skirt it. You can't play no game. Now we just read that there in the first John 20. Go to Matthew 7 and 12. You can still hear that prayer there again. Straight out of the, out the mouth, not the words of it. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law of the prophet. That's all you got to do. Treat people how you want to be treated. Even when they do your wrong, still treat them well. The most high going to see that, and he will reward you accordingly. See, we naturally want to move into the flesh and react and, and, and want to reward somebody with the wickedness that they don't reward us with. But that's not the way to do that. Because the man said in Proverbs that he that rewards. Evil with good, reward evil somebody who did them good with evil. He said evil ain't going to come out their house. He said evil will pursue them consistently. They will always have wickedness on their trail. That's why it pays for us to be good. It doesn't matter about all that. The Psalms 101 is one. We got to be worried about all that. Our God is a just, just God. He's a just judge. He's a God of judgment. He will render every man according to the fruit of his doings. You ain't got to be worried about it. What he said. He said, I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Yah, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. He already said the way of God is perfect. So if you're behaving yourself wisely in a perfect way, what way are you obey, uh, uh, behaving in? He said, when, oh, when thou wilt oh, will thou come unto me, I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the works of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. A proud heart shall depart from me, I will not know a wicked person. Who so privily slander his neighbor, him will I cut off him that have a high look and a proud heart, will I not suffer? 
Now this is the father speaking, saying, My eyes shall be upon the face of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walk in a perfect way, he shall serve me. And we know what that perfect way is that's been established. Let's go to Proverbs 2, though. Listen to what he said. He said, Him that hath walked in a perfect way, he the one going to come and serve you. Now look at it again. Let's go to Proverbs 2. When God gives wisdom out of his mouth, come knowledge and understanding. He lay up sound wisdom for the righteous. He's a buckler to them that walk up right. Ain't that what David said in Psalm 82? He keeps the path of judgment. He preserves the way of his saints. And we know that's the way of Joshua. That way is holiness and that way is perfect. He said, then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity in every good path. Because when you keep this path, then you can understand what's right. Then you can understand proper judgment and what's evil and the good way to go. And when wisdom enters, by the fight, hold that and look at Jeremiah 6. They thus say of God, stand ye in the way and see and ask for the old path where is the good way to walk therein, and you shall find rest for your soul. But they said, we will not walk therein. He would say, we and say, that's in the old times. We in modern times. In modern times, we'll take you to hell. This man say, stand in ye the way and ask for the old path and the good way and walk in that. Walk in perfection of his law. His way is perfect. Our way is imperfect. Why would you not want to walk in a perfect way? That's why people say, ain't nobody out here perfect. Because don't nobody want to walk in a perfect way. You want to walk in your way. And we know the end of the way that's seen right unto the man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. But if you're walking in the way of young, that's perfection and that's life. It's common sense. It's going by the will yet. He said, when wisdom enters into thy heart and knowledge is pleasant into thy soul. And we know what? Yahshua has made unto us what? Wisdom, sanctification, and redemption. So when Yahshua enters into your heart, and, and, and the knowledge of God is pleasant to your soul, and discretion shall preserve thee, and understanding shall keep thee. So now you got something to keep you to stop you from sinning. The word is in your heart. He said, Deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaks for barely saying. So when that evil man comes talking crazy, what you going to do? Well, you got to get from around here, Or well, you going to get busy. You ain't going to sit around and entertain that. He said, Who leaves the path of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness? And we know from last night, if you walk in the ways of darkness, you walk in with the wicked. Who rejoice to do evil and delight in the rebellion of the wicked. Ain't that what Paul wrote in Romans 1? He said, knowing that those who do such things are worthy of death, not only do them, but delight in those that do them themselves. He telling you the same thing, Paul. He came up with nothing new. He said, who ways are crooked and they're rebellious in their path. Deliver these from the strange woman, from the stranger which flatter with her word, which forsake the God of her youth and forget the covenant of her God. For her house will incline unto death, and her path unto the dead. None that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the path of life. But once you get going, what did Paul say? You turn you over to a reprobate mind to do some things or not. Matter of fact, hold this here. Let's go look at, uh, no, I don't know. I can't remember that word, but I know what it says. This man said they are reprobate children, but y'all have rejected them. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be no reprobate silver. You don't want to be something that y'all have rejected. I can't use it. I can't do nothing with this. Don't even come around here. But people don't think this. If people do not think this man will cut you off and leave you alone and let you perish in the wickedness of your own gut. Because when he cut you off, he cut you off because he wanted to do what you wanted to do. You didn't want to obey. You didn't want to walk in perfection. You didn't want to have a way that was perfect, which would be a light to all those that see you. You felt like your way was better, so therefore you should die for it. They are reprobate children, but God has a destiny. Don't go out like that. And it says, That thou may walk in the way of good men and how to express your conscience. Say, but into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost did signify that the way into the holiness of all was not yet made manifest, while, while at the first tabernacle was yet standing. We know the holiness of all is in heaven. Which was a figure for the time then present, and which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make 
him that did the service perfect after paying to the cost. The bulls and goats couldn't make a perfect, not their blood anyway, but the blood of Yahshua is what came to seal the deal. Which stood only in meat and drink to diverse wives and carnal, carnal ordinances and hopes on them until the time of reformation. With the Messiah becoming the high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, because we know the tabernacle on earth, that's what it is. That's going to come down. But the one that dwells in the heaven, what the Father said, that's a perfect tabernacle. It can't be destroyed. It can't corrupt. Not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of bulls, of uh, goats and calves, but by his own blood he is in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us, but the blood of bulls and goats, in the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the hearing of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of the Messiah through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God? First, no conscience for dead works to serve the living God. How are you even gonna think the spirit of the living God will make you perfect and see people sin? That is insane. You doubt the power of God, which means you don't believe. You know what I'm saying? Like, straight up, you don't believe that this man is capable of executing this. How is this hard to understand that his word went from the outside to the inside? How you can't understand? How you can't say that you would be perfect? You doubt in yourself, which means you doubt in God, which means there's no way you're going to get it. Now we drop down to the next chapter in the third verse, of the third verse of the book, Hebrews 10 and 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, but not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the come there must be perfect. All this was showing a shadow of what Yahshua was coming to. It couldn't make it perfect, but we had to be faithful. For well, then will they have not seen to be offered because the worshippers once first have no more conscience of sin, like he told the fools and goats ain't gonna remove that from your conscience, but his word should, if it's in your own. He said, but those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Wherefore, when he comes into the world, he says, sacrifice and offering, thou will not, but abide thou hast prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins I have no pleasure. But then said, I, lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. And we know that to do thy will, that's a perfect will, a perfect way. Above, when he says, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, then thou would not neither have pleasure therein, but to offer by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God, to take away the first that he may establish the second, by which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahshua the Messiah once and for all. We already read that in Hebrews 2 about that. He said, uh, Let's drop down to uh, every priest standing in his ministry and offering all the time the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. But this man, after he offered one sacrifice for sin forever, Sat down on the right hand of God, from his fourth expecting to make till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Wherefore the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he hath said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith God, I will put my laws into their hearts, and into their minds, will I write them in their sins and iniquities, I will remember no more. Now, where the mission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldly to enter the holiest by the blood of Yahshua, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated us to the veil, that is, to save his flesh. Now this man say, by his offering, that he hath perfected us, and by that perfection, we get that spirit that he said that will purge our conscience from dead works. How are you not going to be perfect? This is clear. Old Testament is new. Why are these people teaching us that we can't achieve something that the book is plainly telling us is very painful? You know what I'm saying? Like, this ain't even something that even far-fetched. We know Job and Noah were described as perfect. There was there were kings of Judah that say they served God with a perfect heart. Numerous ones that say I think Hezekiah was born. Josiah might have been born. If my memory serves me correctly, he said these men served him with a perfect heart. How are you gonna sit here and say that people can't do that? You're lying on y'all. Which is an abomination, but that's what you think on that's a whole other time. We did that later. Go to Colossians one and twenty eight. And this is why we do this. This is what it says. He said, Whom we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in the Messiah Yahshua. So Paul let it be known that we warn, we preach to every man, we warn every man, teaching every man in wisdom, that they may be presented 